All right, uh, let's talk about pitcher's conditioning here, okay? Um, it's a topic that there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, pitchers do not need to be running poles. They do not need to be running miles. Uh, you know, yes, your aerobic system is important for recovery. Um, however, there, there's there's no need to run poles and stuff after you throw. There's, there's no lactic acid to flush out. That's a myth, all right? Um, I talk about this topic quite a bit in my book, Move Like a Pro. It's available on Amazon. Um, talked about it at the um, National Conference for the American Baseball Coaches Association um, and talked about it in other, other forums as well. All right, so let's talk about what pitchers should be doing, okay? If you're in preseason, um, you're on a limited pitch count. Um, most kids should be on a pitch count. All kids should be on a pitch count, um, you know, throughout their athletic career. But let's talk about preseason, okay? So if you're trying to build up your work capacity, let's say you just went and pitched an inning and now next week we want to be able to go two innings. Um, we want to kind of model your conditioning after the energy demands of, of pitching another inning, okay? So metabolically, you're going to get a similar stimulus, but you're not getting the stress on the arm, okay? That's the very simple uh, simple explanation for it, all right? So different ways we can do that. Let's say uh, here you just got, got done with the inning. You come out. Um, we're going to wait until our team's back out in the field to start your conditioning. Okay, so we're trying to replicate metabolically another inning. All right, so three up, three down. Um, now you're gonna come down the sideline with your strength and conditioning coach. All right, and we're gonna be doing um, some agility work today. All right, so basically um, every other pitch or so, we're gonna try to do a couple reps. Um, so I've got, got some cones set up here. All right, um, they'd be further apart. In, in a real situation, but I want to put it nice and close so I can talk and explain it as we're doing it. So what I would do here in this situation, all right, I would name the cones. Um, I've named them from months to days to numbers um, using multiple languages, different colors, different colors than what they are, all right? So it's making the pitcher think as they react, all right? Agility is reacting to an outside stimulus, okay? So just for purposes of this, we're gonna call this cone right here January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. All right, pitchers in the middle, I'll say January. They go back quick, come back. I'll say March, they're here, back quick. All right, you got it, we'll go four to five at a time, take a break. Four to five at a time, take a break. Maybe like six rounds of that, okay? Um, another way that we'll do it is I'll set up what's called a box drill. So it's just using four cones. Um, move these here, show you. Again, these are normally gonna be 10 yards apart, but for simplicity's sake, for this video, I'm gonna make it nice and short so you guys can all see what's going on. You hear me? All right, so we'll give a pattern to run. All right, so say we're starting here. I'll say, all right, you're gonna sprint. First cone, cut diagonally to this cone back pedal, plant, and sprint through. All right, so they do that as fast as they can. Then I'll give them another pattern. Another pattern, another pattern. All right, five or six rounds of that, okay? That would be examples of stuff that we would do on an agility day, okay? On, a, um, on another day, maybe we're doing some sprint work, all right? 40 yard sprints. Um, maybe maybe we're doing 50 or 60 yard buildups, right? So. Every 10 yards, they're going faster. So maybe first cone, you're going 60%. Next cone, 70%. Next cone, 80%. Next cone, 90, 90%. All right, and we're building up that way. And then you're walking it back. Uh, we could go cut 20s, right? So have a cone 20 yards out, sprint to that cone, sprint back. Then you get a rest. Um, you know, other other days, we'll, um, we'll do football patterns where a coach will throw football patterns to them. It's hand-eye coordination and you're getting some running in. So you're getting your conditioning. Um, on the long days, you know, maybe we'll go a three quarter pull sprint and then you walk the other quarter, right? And then you walk a quarter back and you sprint the three quarters back. Um, you know, one of my favorite ones to do is uh, we call it mini poles. So it's around the infield. So you're on the grass just outside of the infield and you've got to sprint that whole curve. Um, you know, the, those are examples of baseball conditioning, all right? The days of, hey, you're done pitching, now we'll go run six poles, like that, uh-uh. We're, we're not doing that anymore. 
um, that actually makes you slower. It, it delays recovery. It's, it's extra work. It's extra workload that you're not getting any benefit from. So please stop doing that. Please stop having your players do that. It's not benefiting anybody, all right? If you're having them do work, make sure it's work that's actually benefiting their game. Baseball is an explosive sport. It's not a slow sport. There's nothing in it that we do that's slow. Um, so every, everything that you're doing conditioning-wise needs to build them up to be able to replicate an explosive movement a few seconds after they've already done it, okay? Uh, if you have questions on this, please feel free to reach out. If you like this video, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share it. I'm trying to make this channel a, um, a great resource for parents, players, and coaches um, that have any questions over baseball performance, all right? And again, my book, Move Like a Pro, it's available on Amazon. It's got templates for warm-ups, templates for strength and conditioning exercises for youth players, um, how to develop a foundation for strength and conditioning, and um, exercise library, all right? Any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always available.